Hi, Greg. Linda with EUR Web. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to join you. My first question is, how did you become involved in A, M A Most Beautiful Thing? And what could you tell our viewers it's about? <laughs> yes, definitely. First of all, thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this today, Linda. Um, um, so A Most Beautiful Thing. Uh, a couple years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, Mary Mazio, who uh, is, the, is the film's director and, and producer. Uh, I've known her for 20 years. I was uh, a subject in one of her, her previous films, or I was one of the subjects in one of her previous films. And so she approached me about this story, uh, about this, you know, inner, high, inner city, black, all black rowing team in Chicago from the 90s. And that right there in and of itself was like, I had to like make sure I heard that right, you know, because I don't know much about that particular sport, or I didn't at the time, uh, but I knew it was very sort of Northeastern, very elite, very white. Uh, and, and the fact that, you know, there's a rowing team in the inner city of Chicago at, at a, you know, all black public school, um, you know, certainly was like, okay, I got to hear more about it. And, so as she began to tell me about the story, which is one of the, 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 the young men on the team, a gentleman named Arshay Cooper, uh, who's you know, certainly prominently featured in this, this documentary, um, you know, he wrote a book called Sugar Water. And, and, and sort of that's where she found out about this amazing story. And so um, the more she told me about you know, the story and these young men and what they endured, and her vision for this film, uh, and, you know, I think that combined with her, you know, I, I, you always worry, you know, with, with directors and filmmakers, you know, is it gonna be their vision or the actual real vision? Uh -huh. and, and so, you know, one thing Mary said that struck with, you know, when I knew her and I knew her quality of work, but one thing that really stuck with me was, she said, look, we're just gonna provide the scaffolding, you know, the story is going to tell itself. And these young men in Arche, you know, that, and, and so she was right. I mean, that's, that's kind of what happened along this, this, this process. But uh, she asked if I would come on board as, you know, as an executive producer. And, and I was in, you know, I was in. I felt, you know, that there's so much that we've heard, particularly from Chicago and some of the challenges in, 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 in that community there, um, particularly with young men. Uh, so much of the narrative is, is, is unfortunately surrounded in negativity. And, and here's this, this beautiful story, this positive story, uh, and, and also understanding the, the, the power of sport and, and having gone through that myself as an athlete, uh, it's just a different sport and a sport that I knew nothing about. Um, so, you know, obviously that became more and more apparent as we began this process and um, and began filming and, and, and really kind of connecting with the guys. Um, that whole notion of, of sports and, and, and belonging something big to be, something bigger than yourself. Um, you know, a lot of times you, you, you have these impoverished, underserved communities, uh, and these young people don't have anything to belong to that's constructive, that's positive, and maybe at times will gravitate towards something negative. One, for, for safety reasons and for protection, but for two, for belonging to something. And, and so I think we all inherently uh, are, are driven to, to have that kind of connection. And so um, in a way, this sport provided that. And, and so to really learn about their struggles, their fears, their, their challenges, you know, in terms of the environments they grew up in uh, and how they really were able to lean on each other uh, for support. Uh, and the foundation that sports can provide in terms of values and discipline. Um, if they didn't go on and win some major championship and become national champions or anything like that, it wasn't sort of that sort of that storybook ending. But they became champions in terms of you know as adults, as men, as that that experience really impactful in impacting them. And many many years later being able to see that sense of brotherhood and fraternity still there. Um, so, you know, I'm sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent, but, um, you know, I think, I think it was, it was a compelling story that, that, that really kind of drove, you know, um, 
um, I, that, that I was drawn to. Uh, and it became even more compelling as we went along. But it, it, it's really just about brotherhood. It's about sport. It's about teamwork, leaning on each other. Um, and, and sort of these young men, you know, sort of through this experience, really maturing and, and, and you know, in, in, in some incredible, incredible environments to, to become productive, you know, adults. Now, the timing of the release of this show, The Most Beautiful Thing is Impeccable, given the racial reckoning that's going on, the Black Lives Matter backdrop, uh, George Floyd, and you have these four young men uh, from the west side of Chicago um, connecting with that Chicago police force. And like you said, almost forming a brotherhood. Do you think that the timing of the release of this show uh, is going to be as impactful as I think it's going to be, given the situation that we're currently in? I, I think it is, and it's amazing how it worked out that way. And you know that that was 100% R. Shea Cooper's idea. You know that wasn't something as as filmmakers, you know, you know, we we suggested. It was something he wanted to do, um, and I think in part because he understood how sports and th that particular sport of growing can can unify people. You know, you bring these kids from different communities, different you know, gang neighborhoods, and they come together and, and, and that bond uh, is, is, is strong. And, and so why not, you know, why not replicate that with, with law enforcement? And so, you know, this young man taking the initiative, reaching out, uh, there was a moment when he, when he brought the idea to, to, to the guys in the film and you could just, you could feel the apprehension and just like, I don't know. And, and certainly some of them had, you know, some, some, like all of us as black men, but some of them, you know, had just not the, the best experiences with law enforcement. Um, but that boat, you know, first of all, the, the sport, which I didn't realize, unlike basketball or football or some of the other sports I'm more familiar with, everybody has to work together. You know, basketball is a little bit of a pecking order. You know, if you're, you know, you're Michael Jordan or LeBron James, you're, you're going to- Hill. Or, hey, there you go. <laughs> in my former life, um, you know, you're going to stand out. But in rowing, everyone works together in unison. And so you have to perfect that. And you have, and so to bring this, this boat, sort of bringing these two different worlds together, and you see over time that, you know, they're able to get to a level of understanding. And so in a way, that's, a, that's an example that, that's sorely needed right now with all the division in, this, in, in our country with the racial animosity, you know, I think, I think if anything, one thing I've experienced through all of this is that, um, you know, white people, white America, some are, are interested now, are more interested and are no longer in denial and want to understand what it is to be a black man and a black mm -hmm. person in America. And so if, if we can take the time to, 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 to talk to one another and to listen to one another and try to find some common un, or some common ground and understanding, then you can start to move forward and, and try to, you know, affect change if you're really serious about doing that. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, I mean, the symbolic nature of that gesture and that whole exercise by the guys um, is an example that all of us and, you know, need to sort of follow in a way. And, um, and, and I think, you know, people need to be, people need to vent, people need to emote, and people need to listen. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I think as you do that, you begin, you know, I know from my sport, you know, not to inject or insert my sport into the, to the conversation, but basketball has allowed me to meet people from all walks of life, different countries. And then one thing we share in common is the love of the game. Well, that desire in that boat to have success, you know, causes you to, okay, we have one thing in common. You know, if we talk to each other, we may have more in common. And that's how you begin to change those, you know, the, 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 the prejudices and the judgments and, 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 and some of the, um, you know, the... Um, Stereotypes and, and things that we may help hold with one another. So anyway, an important lesson, an important exercise, and uh, I'm glad that Arshay had to 
the, the maturity and the understanding the big picture to, 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 to do that. Absolutely. Uh, I have one last question. It is uh, NBA related because I would be remiss if I didn't ask. Who do you think is going to win the NBA championships this year? Oh, man, it is, it's hard to say. I mean, um, you know, Los Angeles is looking pretty good now. They seem like they have found their rhythm. Are you in L.A.? I am. <laughs> you don't know what L.A. I'm talking about. You don't know if it's the Clippers or the Lakers. Um, I, I think you're talking about the Lakers, obviously. <laughs> You know, it, it's kind of up in the air. I mean, you know, there's no more, there's no more home court advantage yet with everybody in the bubble. Uh, I like in the East. I like Toronto, you know, Milwaukee, Boston. Um, I do like the Clippers. I know they're in a tough series right now. Um, but, you know, the Lakers at least appear as, a, you know, the last few games, like they figured it out. They found their rhythm. They got their sea legs. And, and uh, they have to be the favorites with, you know, with a LeBron James playing at a high level. I love that. Now, if you can indulge me in one last question. As an individual in my community, what can I do to give back to perhaps underserved, underprivileged children, especially during quarantine? Like, we find from this show that really it's about the extracurricular. It's about the camaraderie. And often those are the first things to go in schools. So what can I do as an individual to help change that? Well, in this COVID time, it's tough. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have the answer because I think we're all trying to figure out sort of, you know, how to navigate this. But I, I think it just shows when you have extracurricular activities, when you have outlets, when you have um, activities that are constructive and positive for young people, um, it, it keeps them focused, it keeps them out of trouble, uh, it gives them purpose, uh, it gives them values. And so I'm a big believer that, that we need that outlet and we need those. It's not just, you know, learning in a classroom, which is obviously important, but it's learning, you know, through, through activity. And that could be, you know, visiting a museum. It could be, um, you, know, you know, music. It can be sports. Um, but there's, there's a certain foundation that, that it teaches you, you know. And, and, and so when you have that experience, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's all part of, of – of giving kids an opportunity. And, uh, and so um, I, I think if you can't give money or if you can't create sort of an organization, uh, you can always just give time. You know, I think kids need uh, time from elders and they need to know that they, they matter and that they care, uh, that people care for them. And, uh, and, and look, I, I think that's happening. I'm encouraged that that is happening amongst our community all over the country. Uh, but we, we need more of it. You know, we need more of that so our next, you know, generation um, will, you know, will, will be able to, you know, to be able to uh, take advantage of all the, the opportunities that are out there. I thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to the release of this because it's a very special show. Thank you, Greg. Oh, thank you, Linda. Good luck to your L.A. team. team. <laughs>